the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Back to your program, Treasures. We are in the book of Revelation, commenting on chapter 3, and the messages given through St. John, the evangelist, to his uh, disciples, the bishops of the seven churches in Asia Minor. Now we are starting the last church, Laodicea. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things says the Amen, the faithful, and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. As you all know, Christ chose one of his tributes to put in his message. So it speaks about the, the needed thing from the bishop. So when he speaks about I'm the faithful, I'm the true witness, I'm the Amen. So as if he's telling you, you may have some problem with witnessing to me. You may not be strong in faith. The beginning of the creation of God. And let me tell you, the beginning of the creation of God were abused by Arius, the one who made the heresy against the divine nature of Christ. He considered this verse as a proof for him that Christ is like the a creature, the first creature made by God. But the beginning of the creation of God, it's like the beginner of the creation. He created everything through him. By Christ, everything were created. So the beginning, when you speak about a designer, you can see that this designer, this good engineer, was the beginning of this building. But he was not a stone, he was not an instrument, he is the beginning. By him, everything were done. So it's the same meaning. These things say the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, as usual that you are neither cold nor hot. So he started with the problem quickly because that's another major problem. It's like the fifth church of Sardis, the dead servant who believed like he is living, but he was dead. In this case, he had another problem. He is like having no degree of spirituality. He's neither cold nor hot. He is not in very close relation to God and you cannot say that he is very far from God. He is in the state what we call the lukewarm. He is not hot but even not very cold. So he is considering himself as a good man but before the eyes of God he is not. I could wish you were cold or hot. Because if you are cold, you will feel because of this coldness that you need God. So you will run towards God like the Samaritan, the all the stories of the repentant people. They felt the coldness away from God. So they were pushed to go into repentance. And you are not hot. I wish you were even cold or hot, hot like the saints. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. You know, some kind of drinks, if you drink it with no hotness or coldness, it has no taste, it will make you vomit. So it's the same meaning, because you tasteless. So I may vomit you out of my mouth. You have to have a taste, you have to have a real relationship with God. It's not the picture of a servant. You have to be, have the spirit of a servant. I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say I'm rich, have become wealthy and have need of nothing. So the major problem of this man that he considered himself as if I do not need to repent. I'm okay. I'm rich enough in spirituality. I have become wealthy. I have need of nothing. So this bad feeling will never help him to repent. 
and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So he was, you know, kind of tough confrontation. You need to know yourself. You need to check your heart. You have to see clearly the real truth in yourself. You are not a good servant. You are not accepted by God. Being not cold, not hot, you may be satisfied with yourself, but this is never satisfying to heaven. You are just like wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. Naked like Adam when he felt nakedness after his sin, blind like those who were blind and they needed badly to be healed by the power of Christ himself, poor because you are very poor in spirit, you believe like you are rich, but you are poor, miserable and wretched. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. So come to me, come to me to take the real gold, meaning that please pray, pray with a fiery heart, not just the picture of prayer. When you come to me, I'll give you the gold to be rich, but you are very poor in prayers. So this, the first, you know, regimen in this treatment, you have to treat yourself by strong prayers. You need to come to me, to, to buy from me the gold. And the gold stands for the purity, the pure life, the virtues of Christ himself to be better. To buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed. So you believe you are fine, no, you are naked. You need to be covered again by the white garment. The first day of baptism, you were holy, you were righteous, you were faithful. So where is the white garment? You are now naked. That the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eyes salve that you may see. This eye ointment stands for the word of God. So because he cannot see, he is blind. He needs the word of God. The word of God help to open the eyes of the blind. So he's speaking about the goal to be rich, the clothes to put on the garment, the white garment, and the ointment for his eyes to see, for the eyes to be opened. So he is, you know, kind of healing the, all the problems he has. He's poor, miserable, naked, and blind. So he's healing and covering all the needs. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Because the words were a bit tough, he wanted to show him that I still love you. I do not hate my people. I love you, because that's why I rebuke you. And then I'm chastising you because you need to be pushed in the right way of repentance. You need to, you know, wake up and see the truth. You need to cry out for help, for the gold, for the clothes, for the ointment, because you are poor, naked, and blind. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Be zealous for your eternal life. Care more for your salvation. Care more for your people because your people are also naked and poor in spirituality because their shepherd is very poor and blind. So you have to be zealous. And when you repent, people will repent after you. When you are, your heart is full of the Holy Spirit, everyone following you will be filled with the Spirit. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So again, the very warm promise here that I'm knocking on your door, just open to me. 
and I will come and we will sit together, we will have dinner together, we will enjoy our first relationship. I love you and I need you to love me back. I need you to enjoy your relationship with God. So to get out of this lukewarm state, you need to push more, you need to struggle, to strive in praying, in reading the Bible, in repentance, in discipleship, because you are like a sick man and you need to be treated. I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. You know, dining with Christ as if like friends. So Christ is inviting himself to you, to your heart, to be a friend, chatting together, spending time together. So it's like having good time, quality time, quiet time with Christ to help you to be hot in your relationship with God. I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Very strong promise. You will be enthroned. You will sit just beside me in heaven. Think of the future. Don't be busy with your glory here. Don't accept the glory of the people. I will grant to sit with me on my throne, and I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Because Christ, being the son of man, he is our model. So he said it this way, I overcame all the struggles, all the problems, and I succeeded in my mission. I won it. So I want you to follow me and you overcome your problem in order to get the same eternity, to enjoy my throne with me forever. He who had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. That was the seventh church, the last church of the seven churches, the church of Ludicia. But again, it stands for the lukewarm, the problem of being not hot and not even cold, not very far from God and not into spirituality. You are not zealous. So you need to repent to have this deal in your heart. And it means that you are blind, you are sick, you are poor, miserable, and naked just because you stop struggling. It's all about to ask God again for his mercy, for his help, and to wash your eyes with the word of God and to pray from your heart. Now you will enjoy the crown of heaven and to be enthroned with Christ in heaven. Let me again revive the seven churches because it's very important to us, the servants and to everyone. The first church, the church of Ephesus, spoke about the loveless, that you lose your first love. The second was about the persecution, the pain, the sufferings. The third one was the kind of compromising with the evil part of the world. And Theatera, the fourth one, about the corruption invading the church. And then the fifth one, Sardis, were about the dead servant who has no spirit in his life, just having a name. And Lodicia, you know, about the lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. And Philadelphia before Lodicia, about the how much faithful you are. And the last one about the lukewarm. In all these churches, you can see Christ was there, helping his men to be better, encouraging everyone and saying that I know your work. I'm here to listen to your word. Be strong and giving all of them the promise of eternity in different pictures and warning some of them if they stay in their loose status, you know, they are in danger and they may lose their name in heaven or their eternity. Moving to chapter 4, after these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. So it comes like a third vision. The first one was the vision of Christ on the throne 
all the angels around him and people praising him and the picture of the son of God, the same son of man, and he started speaking to John. Then chapters 2 and 3 were about the vision of the messages to the seven churches in Asia Minor. Now chapter 4 is another vision, vision about heaven. Door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. So some angel from heaven were shouting, Come, come up, and from above you can see the future. So it's like what will happen after the period of St. John. So starting from chapter 4, now it's like a prophecy, not telling the church of these days what's happening, but the coming church, the coming period of time, which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit meaning that he was taken into the spirit as if the Holy Spirit, you know, guards his heart and guides his mind to focus on the prophecy, on the vision he will see. So he cannot see things around him. He is not in the flesh now. He is in the spirit. And no one can, you know, explain this state of a saint because the Holy Spirit covers all the man at that minute. And behold, a throne set in heaven. So he looked at the throne of Christ. And one sat on the throne, and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. So he looked up to see Christ in his glory, and the very precious stones shining from everywhere. So he cannot explain how beautiful and glory is this picture of God sitting on his throne. So he made it this way, like a jasper and sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne. Again, the rainbow mentioned in the first chapter, mentioned again because the rainbow stands for the peace, for the love of God. Because of the rainbow, God did not make another flood to destroy the world. It was like a promise given to Noah. There was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting. So, around the throne there were many other thrones, you know, and the thrones of these 24 elders which stands for the priesthood, because you all know the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, 12 and 12, so we will look up to 24 priests around the throne of God. This stands for the priesthood in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Clothed in white robes, and the white robes also the special garment of the priest. And they had crowns, so they were crowned because they did their part. They were honest in delivering the message of salvation. They followed the commandment after Moses in their Old Testament and after the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament. So they were faithful. So they had crowns of gold on their heads. So these 24 elders or priests sitting on the thrones around the big throne of the Lord Jesus Christ, that was the vision seen by St. John. After he spoke to the church leaders, after he delivered the message to each of them, now he, it comes to the time of praising God and enjoying the praises of heaven. Now, as if John was member in heaven and sharing in these praises forever. Glory to God. Amen.